Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Habitu fillah. Some important characteristics of the husband and wife. And this is meant to be very brief and short, but just some general advice, marital uh, advice, and important ways of how we should think of one another. Uh, as Muslims with our uh, and, and spouses and zawaj or marriage in Islam is not just simply fulfilling one's rights and not just simply asking for one's rights because all of us sh fall short the Prophet والسلام, said Kullu ibn Adam khatta all the children of Adam make mistakes and the best of those who sin or make mistakes are those who repent. So all of us have shortcomings. The Prophet mentioned that in order his Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and the Ummah he said what means be good to your wives and I am the best of examples to my wives the Prophet sallallahu was the best of us as the Prophet mentioned in the hadith that he sallallahu alayhi wa was the best of examples and that is the, he exemplified the manners we want to have and treatment we want to have with our spouses. And he was the best of examples. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَّهُ خَلَقَ زَوْجَيْنِ ذَكَرْ وَلُمْتَ And verily, he created, who created? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Created, uh, Partners, meaning spouses, male and female. So I don't think there's any mystery, except to some, Ahlul Shubahat or Shahwad, about the husband and wife being appropriate spouses for one another in Islam. And the Prophet والسلام, said with regards to encouraging marriage and before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says before the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَنْكِهُ مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ nisa," and marry and it was in a command letting us know how important it is to marry وَأَصْلَ أَمْرِ يُفِيدُ الْوُجُوبِ and the, the origin of a command in the shara is that it uh, necessitates something being an obligation. But however, the, the fuqaha, the scholars of fiqh, have let us know that there's different rulings with regards to marriage. Sometimes it's wajib, sometimes it's mandub, and this is not the time nor place. I want to talk about the characteristics. But I'm talking a little bit first about the mishru'iyya. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders and says, and then marry from amongst the women those who you are able. And we know that Islam also, and as some of the ulama mentioned, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, marry, uh, you know, uh, two, three, or four, and if you're unable to, then marry one. That the scholars mention, some of the scholars mention, that that order of that is showing that polygamy comes first. If one is able to, of course. But if you're unable to be just, meaning just with your wealth, just with your time, just with your physical relations, then marry one. And the Prophet والسلام, said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, faman istata'a minkum alba'a falyatazawaj. O youth, whoever amongst you is able, to marry, then marry. 
So this is also a command. So I want to talk about characteristics of a good husband and characteristics of a good wife. In the very, in brief, brief terms. Just something as a reminder for us. So really the characteristics are really more or less the same. And I wrote most of them in the Zawad, in the Zoj, in the husband, but in fact, these same characteristics really transfer over here. So it's really one list. So first I want to say, and, and, and say an important characteristic of, of being married is being thankful and grateful. Thankful and appreciative. And what that means, if, for example, from the side of the woman, if she has a good husband, I mean, he's doing the best to take care of his duties. He has shortcomings, but he's trying, he's striving. Then she should be grateful. And she should show thankfulness and grateful, gratefulness. And the way she can do that, of course, uh, by mentioning and, and saying, you know, Jazakallah khairan, and saying kind words, words of affection, so on and so forth. Or even through physical expression. And likewise, this goes for the man, that often brothers are, do not show their thankfulness and gratefulness to their wives. Sometimes the hearts become hard and they're unwilling to say, Jazakallah khairan habibti, uh, thank you, beloved, or, uh, you know, to show thanks or to show it physically or uh, however. But showing gratefulness is important because the Prophet said, Men lem yashkar nas la yashkar Allah. Okay, maqala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever does not thank the people does not thank Allah. And who wants to be in that situation? So being grateful for what you have and thankful. And then perhaps there are two different characteristics, but we're just going to be brief. Also, for the husband to be good with his wife. And we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that he was the best of his wives. You know, he ordered to be good with the wives. And he was the best. And I'm the best to my wives. This is the best of example. That's from the Prophet So in general to be good, how do we express that goodness? By being kind. Kindness through speech and kindness through actions. So the details, you can fill in the blanks. Likewise, that goes for the women. To be kind to their husband. Because a man, especially if he's taking care of his wife or wives, he wants to hear that. He wants to have that kindness reciprocated. He wants to know that. So that's very important, a very important characteristic. Likewise, on both the husband and the wife is akhlaq, manners, good manners. Very important. The Prophet said, Ma min shayin athkulu fi mizan a mu'min yawm al qiyamati min husnu khulq wa inna allaha yubghidu al faysh al bidi. The Prophet said, and I believe it's a hadith of Abi Darda, you find in Tirmidhi, that there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the mu'min. This is the scale of the mu'min, the believer then good manners. So this means good manners in general. But of course, some in Babel, Ola, as a priority to your spouse, having good manners. Good manners with them, kind, not insulting them, not cursing them, being kind. And those manners uh, are reflected through speech and action. Likewise, the wife being kind with her husband, honoring him, respecting him. This is very important, respect. Respect the husband, that he respects his wife, and may Allah forgive us of our shortcomings, and that the wife respects the husband, that he feels like a king. And all too often, women do not understand this, as men don't understand this. Let's talk about the women though first, and then we'll talk about the men. That women often don't understand that a man, for a man, one of the most important things is that he feels like he's the king. Even if he's got shortcomings, even if he's making mistakes, even if he falls short, he needs to feel like he is the king of his household and he needs to feel like he's, he's somebody. So very important for the woman to give him that status, 
in that respect. Likewise, women like to be heard. They like to communicate, and they want you to listen, to be a good listener, which we fall short on all the time. And so to listen to your wives, and legitimately respect them, respect their opinion, respect their view. And that's hard to do. A lot of times we think, well, no, I'm the boss, so there is no discussion. No. There's nothing wrong with respecting the view. The Prophet ﷺ was the best of examples. And look and read the stories on how he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his wives in the ahadith. This comes in speech, as we said, gentle speech, so not cursing one another. And going back to the hadith, There isn't a thing which weighs heavier than on the scale of a believer than good manners, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. Or that, you know, one is argumentative, and, and then it transgressions to cursing and just evil speech and spiteful. So it's very important to guard our tongues. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith about the the goodness of the tongue and the wickedness of the tongue. And I've forgotten the hadith, but the meaning is that a person, there isn't a thing that brings people to the hellfire more than the tongue. And there isn't a thing, uh, than the, the tongue and the private parts, and there isn't a thing which will bring a person to Jinnah more than the good manners. Something to this effect. The hadith goes, Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akthari ma yurkhul al-nas al-jannah. Qala taqwa Allah wa husn al-khuk. Wa su'ila an akthari ma yurkhul al-nas al-nar faqal al-fim wa faraj. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akthari an akthari ma yurkhul al-nas al-jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about what will make the people enter paradise the most. He said, Taqwa Allah is fear in Allah and good manners. Showing us good manners again. And fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning do the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling his rights to worship him and him alone, and avoiding the prohibitions. And then, And then he was asked, what about those things that bring the people to the hellfire? He said, Al-Thim, the mouth, Wafaraj, and the private parts. Why? Because look at all the sins. When we speak harsh to our spouses, when we curse our spouses, when we snap at our spouses, we incur sins. When we do sins with the private parts, masturbate, commit zina and adultery, that shows us that leads to the hellfire. When you guard that, part of guarding those things gets you to Jannah. If you can guard those two things, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, you know, I guarantee you Jannah. Come on, call Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi So that lets us know. Another important point with this I want to mention is that with the spouses, that being lenient with one another, that's something, a rifq, the Prophet ﷺ said, there isn't a thing which is, uh, brings about good more than being gentle. By being gentle and understanding that sometimes a man has a bad day and he's, he might snap at you. But if the woman can take that a little bit and say, okay, I know he's, he's a little upset. Let me give him some space or let me deal with that and articulate to him later. But not at the moment. You hurt me and da da da. Because a lot of times that brings about fight and men, we become stubborn and we want that respect. We want sometimes more respect than we deserve. And so it can be an argument. So we have to be careful. So for the women, sometimes just to let him, he's going to be that way. That's kind of the nature, a little bit of the aggression coming out. Sometimes just take it on the chin sometimes. 
not taking the physical on the chin, but taking, sometimes he might snap, and then you tell him about it later, and say, you know, like this, you know, in a nice way. And likewise, the men to be cognizant of that snapping. That's not a good, a beneficial thing. But I do believe that sometimes it's a part of how we accept the pressures of the dunya. And Allah knows best. Another thing that I want to mention is that taking care of oneself. What I mean here that is helpful and a good characteristic in helping one another is physically taking care of oneself, one, uh, taking care of yourself. For example, a man to be clean, clean around his sparse spouse, not just coming to bed, the same old torn garments and whatever else, and 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 not being clean, not taking that night shower if he needs one, and, you know, having sweated and just jumping in there. Uh, instead, to know that hey, he's going to be next to his spouse, to actually give her something that you know maybe smell good, put the perfume, uh, the cologne on, or the atar or what have you. The Prophet Sallallahu loved atar, and he loved nisa, and he, uh, you know, women, and he loved salat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi loved prayer, he loved women, and he loved smelling good. So, the man who has a spouse loves his wife. Smell good for her. Be clean. Brush the teeth. Make sure you're, you're clean and ready. The hair, what have you. And also I want to mention is the physical. A lot of times women, they enjoy a man who's in shape. You don't have to be a bodybuilder, you don't have to be a whatever, but then he's in shape. He takes care of himself. He's physically, he's not just fat and obese, laying around rolls over on the bed, rolls off the bed like this, sitting in a chair all the time, but he takes care of himself. This is a part of helping her. And especially these things are important for a man. Men were very, uh, many of us have a, not a material side, but I'm, I'm trying to think of the term, but we're very visual and physical like that. So men, we need that stimulus. We need to have something to run home to, to help us and protect us from what's outside. Because what's outside distracts us easily. And we live in a great time of fitna. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ma, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi said, Finna awla fitna bani Israel kanan fin nisa. And the first fitna or trial of the children of Israel was the women. Why? Because men were weak. The high heels, the short skirts, all of those things cause harm. They beat a man. They hurt the men. They can weaken and tear down the strongest man can be torn down. And this is just giving you a little real talk. So why it's so it's important for both to take care of themselves physically. A man likes if if your husband is one who likes a, a thin woman, try to try to accommodate that. If your woman if your husband likes a bigger woman, well, accommodate that. If he likes one who's in shape, accommodate that. Try to take care of that. And it's better for your health to eat good, be clean, and take care of your body physically. That's healthier for both spouses. Uh, another thing is also gift giving. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Rijal, Al-Rijal al ala nisa that men are the maintainers and protectors of the women. Men, our job is to maintain and protect our wives physically, mentally, and spiritually so that by uh, by Taken care by doing the with the, the taking care, giving her her rights, her financial rights, taking care of her. She's clothing, she has shelter, she has uh, you know, food and, and drink, those things, you know, and meeting her needs and her desires as much as you can, and the physical. This is a part of taking care of the women and being the protector and the maintainer, protecting her physically as well. And this comes down to the rights. 
that's the 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 man's right over uh, the woman's right over the man is that he protects her and maintains her maintains her with financial and along with that gift giving gift giving softens a heart and there's a hadith of the prophet وسلم, which is very short uh, which means uh, give gifts and it increases the love basically as he said so giving gifts it softens the heart who doesn't get a gift and doesn't get a little bit you know that that's important to give gifts soften the heart surprise surprise or take her out if you have the means or give her something nice if you have the means also we already mentioned being a listener especially for the women they need to be heard uh, and giving her her spiritual and physical needs that the Prophet ﷺ said all of you are responsible for his for his flock that all of you are responsible for those you know you're entrusted with responsibility so those who you're entrusted with you have to meet their needs you have to take care of them that means physically mentally spiritually so the spiritual is very important too that you try to as a family read if you uh, you know have some Islamic books you have a lesson just reading if nothing else you listen to a lecture once a week whatever something for the soul together related to the deen to strengthen one another encourage one another to salat make sure you know encourage your wife she should not be being disobedient by doing sinful things like going out with perfume makeup no you can't be out having your wife her hair is showing her body is being uh, is showing out in public and you're just casual like that yeah my wife's fine right no Islam doesn't allow for that and that's a big sin for the man in Arabic there's a term the Prophet Sallallahu used called a uh, diyuth that he's you know he's like a not like a like a pimp or a you know it's something it's like a wicked weak man because he's not taking care of those spiritual needs and you know the tarbiyah of his his family kind of raising them spiritually and helping them to be better believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that that nikah that's a strengthening of one another in all those means likewise the wife should encourage the husband to pray in the masjid to make sure he's praying to stay away from the muharramat they encourage one another in ibadah, in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in meeting the ultimate right, which is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. And I'm sorry that this got went so long. And that meeting one another's rights is very important. As we said, men are very physical. So as the Prophet said, that when a man calls his wife to bed and she denies him, the angels curse her to the morning. Especially if it's not a legitimate reason. If he's taking care of her and he's doing the best he can and he's not like dirty and things like this or what have you, then she needs to meet his rights. Because that's very important. A man being denied that can lead to all kind of facade, all kind of wickedness to the earth. As we mentioned, the pornography, the masturbation, the zina, the adultery, the all kind of wickedness possibly for some homosexuality or all kind of craziness why because of denial so that's a very important she meets those rights as he needs to meet her rights a last thing that I didn't write here uh, this here I did understanding and this is a beautiful example and I'm going to mention we were in the gathering myself a couple of brothers that are students of knowledge that are duat uh, many, many years ago, I would say about seven years ago, and we went to see Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al aqil in Medina. We went to visit the Sheikh at his house. As usual, he was accommodating, and we asked him some nice questions. Actually, you'll find probably a lot of it on Medina.com, because it was some of the brothers from Medina.com, one of the main people there, and one of the other du'at in America. So we asked, and one of the questions 
either myself or one of the brothers asked and it was about uh, you know about marital advice or something and one of the things he mentioned I'll never forget he said to uh, that there is a like an understanding or a type of compromise there was another word used and I can't recall but it, it meant basically that there's compromise that you're not always going to meet each other's rights you're going to fall short so you have to realize that a lot of times new couples young couples especially don't realize that they go in with a book they read Bukhari oh you have you didn't provide the, the rent properly this month you didn't do this you didn't buy me this you're not meeting my rights oh she didn't you know he's in disarray she didn't uh, when I called her to bed she didn't come you know and acting as the world caved in and I recall a situation like that a newly married couple young couple and it was exactly the situation the brother was distraught my wife didn't do this you know he was like should I divorce her and then the older brother who had wisdom said brother all of us have this experience. We all have this. This is a part of being married. But but this is the Islamic right. The point being is those rights and responsibilities. We're going to fall short. So having the understanding and the compromise is important for each marriage. And you're going to have your own borders and your own boundaries of understanding between you and your husband or you and your wife. Every couple is different. Every household is different. Every person is different. So you're going to have to make those own boundaries uh, within the bounds of the shara. If it goes outside the shara, then you need to try to rectify that. But still, even with that, you are going to be the ultimate determiner about sticking in the marriage and sticking it out and being patient with one another and compromising. And as we said, so we went to see Sheikh Muhammad al Wahab and he mentioned one of our elder scholars. He didn't mention his name, but I'm sure we know who it was. And he said that the sheikh has his two wives, and they sometimes they, they get him. You know, he goes to this one, bam. This one, she's hitting him with it, you know, and, and really angry with him. And what does the sheikh do? The, the, this sheikh, the Sheikh Muhammad of the Wahab, told us, this elder sheikh, may Allah preserve them all. What does he do? She's very angry, she's upset, and he kisses her on the forehead, and she loses all of that. This is not going to work for everyone. And not every culture. Some cultures tend to be more feistier than others. But the point is, is doing something to de-escalate that. And, and the women need to also be uh, uh, helpful in that, in, in being dissonant, willing to be de-escalated. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself, the shaitan, wa sallallahu wa sallam, and the Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam.